I grew up um, two minutes from, from the ground, Acton, um, not far from, from the main stadium. Um, yeah, obviously, um, when, I was a, when I was a kid, I can remember mates of mine, you know, there wasn't actually racist self as in saying to me you're racist or, or, or saying things. It was, it was a funny situation I found myself in, actually. I went, went to his house, my mate's house, and um, I'm not sure if the door was open or the sister let me in, I can't remember, but there was a few of my mates in the front room. But as I've walked through, they've obviously not known I was there or coming and, you know, the sister just let me in. Yeah, go on, D. You know, they're in the room. So I've gone through there and I've heard them say something and I was a bit, you know, I was a bit caught back by it and I thought, wow, you know, and these are the nicest guys you'll ever meet, you know, these guys that want... What was it? Just, just do it. Yeah, know. just not something about me, but right. about black people. Right. Um, but it was obviously, whether it was a joke or not, but, you know, it was just a bit alarming for me, you know, me not being there and them joking about it rather than, you know, obviously me being there and them joking about it is a little bit different, you know. Um, as I said, um, you know, I've kind of caught them off guard a bit and it was, uh, as I said, these are nice lads and, you know, you know, it kind of caught me back, put me, put, put me back a bit and I thought, wow, you know, and I've known these, these, these kids, you know, all my life and you know, I would like to think they're my friends, I would like to think I'm their friend and, you know, it was, yeah, it was a bit of a strange one, to be honest. As I said, it wasn't like they was joking when I was there, you know. You know, I wasn't there and I heard them say something which was a bit, a bit funny. Did you, have you ever come across race within the game of football, within, you know, um, within I, a, a non-league or any, any yeah, stage of your career? Yeah, I was, um, I can't put, remember exactly when it was. It was in my earlier times, whether it was non-league or when it, whether it was, you know, um, just when I made professional. Um, but I remember a fan saying something to me, which was a bit, a bit out of the, out of the ordinary. And um, as I said, it kind of put, put, puts you back, and you think, "Wow, you really think that?" Or you know, why would you, why would you say something like that? Was that while you were playing the game? Or um, yeah, afterwards? I can't remember if it was half time, coming off at half time, or coming out from half time. I can't remember exactly, but it was, it was, it was then. But um, as I said, I've not ever had abuse by players or. Or anything like that over my career. But you must be aware that, like previously, like the yeah. previous generation of black players in this mm. country, yeah, suffered definitely. it. From, yeah, you know, wow. From the some of the worst examples. Yeah, yeah definitely. You know, they, you know, they they took the brunt of it. Really, they, you know, they made it okay for us really to to be playing now. And you know, obviously, I'm not not you know stupid. I know it's still in the game, you know, a little bit. But um, you know, I can just imagine how much they had it, you know, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, you know, it could have, you know, it could have been, you know, so much worse, you know, and obviously, you know, I'm not saying they didn't retaliate, but I'm sure they probably kept a cool, cool calm head and, you know, and, and made it, as I said, made it good for us. The ones that got through did, I think, mm, and they, exactly, but the ones yeah. that there's a lot of them who, who uh, yeah. responded, yeah. you know. Mm. By fighting and things like that, and didn't, yeah. didn't you know it actually drew drove them out of the game? You know? Well, yeah, you know you, can, you couldn't blame them really, um, but yeah, as I said, you know um, there, there would have been a, probably a lot that obviously kept in the game and stayed in the game that, as I said, made it made it okay for us to to be playing now, made it a lot easier for us, I should say, you know, rather than you know it being you know as bad as it was. And um, as I said, I'd like to think it's nowhere near as bad as it was, but as I said. I'm not silly. I, you, you know, you probably know it's still in the game a, a little bit, but and more than that, it's much more in society now. I think in football, people know they keep their mouth shut. Yeah. John Barnes is exactly. our film is saying, you know, even mm. the racist keeps their mouth shut for 90 minutes because they mm. know they lose their season ticket. Exactly. There's a five-year ban. Yeah. Exactly. Um, on fans, and it can be, it can mm. be, you know, it can be longer if it yeah. depends on the incident. But in society, there's there's loads of different forms of racism. There is exactly, and as I was trying to explain to you earlier, you know, it's, it was one I had when I was a kid. You know, and, you know, it was, you know, it was my mate. You know, so um, as I said, if if your mate could do it, then you know, people you don't know surely do it. So, but as I said, I, you know, it's, it is a tough one because I don't think it's as bad as it used to be. But as I said, there is still racism and you know, racists out there that, if you like to say, keep it quiet. You know, or 
behind closed doors or whatever you want to call it and know the, 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 the disciplinaries now to do it at games and stuff so probably keep their mouth shut like that but um, as I said it's a difficult one you know but obviously with what the show the race of the red card I think that's you know helping massively one of the things that uh, the, the Stephen Lawrence case drew mm. attention to was institutionalised race yeah um, have you ever come across that have you been stopped by the police on a <laughs> on a regular basis for um, yeah I've been stopped by the police and you know um, they tell you it's not a racism thing you know obviously that's they would they would say that um, but I've yeah, I've been stopped numerous of times for no reason. You know, maybe in my earlier days when, you know, maybe people didn't know who I was and I wasn't, you know, doing what I was doing now. You know, um, it was a struggle really, but, you know, now obviously when I do get stopped, it's more once they get a, a look at your face and they kind of know who you are, they're kind of a bit more understanding rather than as hard as they used to be. And that, that's certainly a thing that, that going from Shaka, mm. you know, he, he actually got racial abuse. Yeah. Turned around and the, and the guys ran over the road to try and get his autograph. Mm. From See? being, a, being somebody exactly. who hated it because they saw him from behind him. Exactly, back, exactly. Turns around and he's, oh, it's Shaka as well. Mm. It's no longer it's different, a yeah, is it? Exactly. It's, it, it's somebody famous, the one he's mm. over. Stereotypical, that's, that's, that's the world we live in now, you know. Unfortunately, sometimes you get people that, you know, look at you, you know, as a colour really then, which is a bit, you know, baffling for me really. We're all the same, we're all we're all equal, you know, whether we play football, whether we you know, we work a nine to five, we're all the same, you know, and that's something that's I've grew up on. You know, my mum's white so, you know, and, and my dad's black, so she and he, you know, put that into me from from a young age and, you know, no one's better than no one and you know, that's what I believe and I still strongly believe that now. Another aspect of institutionalised racism is black young people are uh, 50% unemployment mm. uh, amongst black young people. Yeah, I've is been that, there. Yeah. I've been there myself, so um, it is difficult. And, you know, we could say, you know, um, that it's hard to get a job, you know, and as I said, I've been there and I've been actually going around different places asking for, for a job and, you know, they've turned me back, really. And, you know, as I said, I can understand a lot of young black kids, young black men saying that it's, it's difficult to get a job. And, you know, as I said, some people look at it and think, well, how is it difficult, you know? But until you actually have been there, and obviously I'm speaking off my own, off my own back of being there and actually being in a situation where I haven't worked for, you know, six months, trying to get a job and it's been really really difficult and you know and, and it's not off the back of me not trying because obviously I had a mum and a dad that you know obviously pushed me to, to get a job and you know as I said I've, I've been there so I know these what these kids are going through and it is difficult to get a job being a young black man it, it, you know that's just life. If you're a guy called Brian Dean I don't know if you've ever heard Brian Dean yeah. Leeds United player but he, yeah. Brian Dean goes for an interview mm. and in, um, when he was a young kid to be a surveyor and walks in and, and he said that the guys who were doing him could see their face change because mm. they were thinking Brian Dean is a white guy. Mm. Um, and he said as soon as he saw their face change he knew that he, he, he wasn't getting that job. Yeah, of course. Is, is, is that happening yeah, to you in terms of yeah, going yeah, for an interview yeah, DJ Campbell? Yeah, I've, you know, back then I wasn't the DJ Campbell I am now putting right. that obviously. No, no, I'm, I'm talking yeah, about when you were younger. Of course, yeah. But um, um, yeah, I've been in situations where they've just completely you know, disowned, disregarded me, you know, and, you know, and I've actually been to an interview where my mate used to work in the place and he was like, yeah, there's, yeah, you'd get a job, there's a job here, okay? and I know when I've actually gone in there, it's like, no, there's no job here, you know, you know, it's, you know, I've got no jobs available and stuff, and my mate works there, so I know there's a job available, so, but it's how you look at things, you know, you think, well, it could be this, it could be that, but as I said, it's, it's, it was part of, of life, which is a shame, but you know, it's you know, it's how it was. As I said, I've lived both lives, you know. So I've worked, you know, I've not worked, and I've played football. I've been fortunate enough to, to, to play football and get where I am now, which is which is, you know, a dream I've had for for many years. And you know, um, as I said, it's kind of puts in perspective what I had 
as in going to trying to get a job and getting knocked back and stuff and you know not feeling like I was good enough or, or you know just you know not, not capable of doing things to now you know and it's been a struggle it has been a long struggle and I've you know I wouldn't change it for the world the, the route I've got I've took sorry to, to get here and as I said it's made me the person I am today I believe and you know it makes you you know it humbles you I should say to, to what to what you've got and what you've achieved.